Hello and welcome to part two of my Gamera a thon. Last time around, I looked at the first entry in the series, Gamera the Invincible, which showed that Gamera's the friend to all children, or at least one kid anyway, and the enemy of pretty much everyone else. By the way, statistically speaking, some of the people killed during his rampage had to have been kids. Gamera proved to be a hit, so it was only natural to make a sequel where he fights another monster. Unfortunately, they were unable to get the rights for Gamera to fight Charles Barkley, so instead they made Gamera vs. Barugan, or as it was called in North America, War of the Monsters. At least I think that's what it says. Can't really tell. That's what they get for filming the opening credits inside a Petri dish. I would go to the Japanese version for confirmation, but I can't read those credits either. So the movie begins with a recap of the first Gamera movie. An airplane carrying an atomic bomb crashed in the Arctic Ocean, and the great heat and force of the explosion released the monster Gamera. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant Gamera. You know, I think I'm starting to understand why they put that extra M in the first movie now. Gamera attacked Japan, leaving death and destruction in his wake. Man-made weapons were powerless against him. But an obnoxious little kid in short shorts still liked him for some reason. They got rid of Gamera using Plan Z, so how exactly did they bring him back this time? Gamera was lured into a rocket and shot to Mars, but the rocket crashed into a meteor. <laughs> Huh, well that was easier to get through than I thought. Until next time! Okay, that's not the end. But if I'm gonna review the rest of this movie, can we please swap out the footage with the Japanese version? The quality here really is shit. Ah, there, that's better. Gamera makes his way back to Earth, but the people of Japan have nothing to worry about. This is the second movie, which means Gamera's a good guy now, right? In order to store up even greater energy in his massive body, Gamera attacked Kurobe Dam, one of the largest in northern Japan. You know, between this and destroying the geothermal plant in the first movie, Gamera really seems to hate renewable energy. Is he working for the Koch brothers or something? And just think, all this destruction could have been avoided if only this dam had employed child labor. Well, it's been a long day destroying the lives of thousands of people, now off to find a random kid to save. While Gamera searches for more victims, let's meet some of our human cast. You've resigned. You've made up your mind. Yes, I have, sir, as of today. What is it? Tired of flying? Well, he's flying a plane right now, so probably not. I don't have to tell you that flying is the only thing worth doing, and that's the reason I'm quitting. My dad had the same attitude when it came to parenting. Hey, I know why this guy's quitting flying. It's so he can audition to be Japanese Fonzie. Also, fellas, I think putting a fuse on the end of a grenade is a little redundant, isn't it? Come in, Keisuke. Okay, so the plot of the movie is that back in World War II, Keisuke's brother found a giant opal in New Guinea that he hid in a cave for safekeeping, and now he's sending Keisuke and two other guys to go find it. And in case you're wondering how they're gonna shoehorn in an annoying little kid to fuck this all up, good news, everybody! THERE'S NO KENNY IN THIS MOVIE! Ugh. I cannot begin to describe what a relief this is. This is like the monster movie equivalent to finding out you don't have herpes. But if they want to find that opal, they're gonna need to be very careful. Watch out when you're in that cave. There are deadly scorpions. And don't close your eyes when you're in the jungle, either. Yeah, thanks for the advice. You want to tell them not to stick their dicks in a shark's mouth while you're at it? I don't know what they're worried about, though. New Guinea looks a lot like my Hawaiian vacation video. Also, does this count as blackface? I don't know. Ah, well. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll still be more respectful than this shit. Miserable Chinese wants to go home. Look at that. Can you make it out? I'm sorry, I don't even know if they're words. Or just letters. It's the cocktail menu, you dumbass. Now are you gonna order a Mai Tai or not? Huh? Holy crap! There's natives in this native village! Can we get one of them to be a guide? We don't even know how to talk their language. That's all right, I can talk yours. Well, that's a relief. For a second there, I was worried there was gonna be subtitles in this foreign movie. Wait a second, who the hell is this guy? I am Dr. Matsushita, and this island has been my home for almost 15 years. Okay, please tell me this movie is not going full island of Dr. Moreau here. The last thing we need is this guy putting on an ice bucket hat. Anyway, better get the plot moving. It has to do with a cave nearby. Do you know it? I don't know what you want there, but give it up. Don't go. Well, why not? You go out. 
to the hill of death. Uh, he asked about a cave, not a hill. The natives tell them the cave houses an evil spirit, but then they remember that they have guns and just decide to go anyway. Come on, fellas, King Kong's gotta be in this jungle somewhere. I don't know why the natives were worried about the cave. It just looks like they wandered onto the set of a Hammer movie. What was it? Scorpion. One bite, and you're dead in four minutes. Uh, thanks, but you could have just stepped on it. Were those grenades you brought in case you saw a mosquito? Scorpions were just the beginning, though. They're gonna have to face many other dangers in order to find that opal and... Oh, never mind, there it is. Look here. It's worth everything we've gone through. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. Ooh, your very own fully functioning battle mech? Which is really a thing you can actually buy? The whole city will suck Lame. Wait till I show it to my wife. That's it. I'll buy a new wife. Actually, if there's anything this guy should buy, it's feeling in his legs. <laughs> Damn. If only they'd shot him in the leg on time. That's rotten luck. Nice to know this guy has the same reaction to someone dying as getting a flat tire. Aw, oh, what? He brought a picture of his family with him? Well, no wonder he died. He might as well have said he had two days till retirement. Japanese John Tron here blows up the cave to take the opal for himself, but because Keisuke had already retired from flying, he ends up surviving. However, the explosion does leave him with a disfiguring farmer tan. He's got a lot of explaining to do about that opal. We found what we were looking for. An opal? My brother found it during the war. He hid it in that cave himself. And so, by rights, it's ours. According to what? The Finders, Keepers, Losers, Weepers Treaty? So what is it if not an opal, Kara? It is a bringer of misery. No, Kenny's are the bringers of misery. And I've already said that this movie doesn't have one, so you're really overreacting here. Kara and Keisuke decide to go to Japan to look for the opal, which reminds me, how's the other guy doing? You got this athlete's foot in the jungle? Ah, don't worry, it's nothing a little ointment won't fix. Or a giant infrared lamp. Whatever's more convenient, I guess. I totally believe this would kill the fungus, though, since when he leaves the opal in front of the lamp, it burns through his coat in seconds. He was supposed to have this thing pointed at his foot? Where the hell did this doctor study? The Dr. Insano School of Medicine? Also, it appears the opal's made of delicious gelatin. Oh, wait, I guess it's an egg. This is what happens when you feed your Tamagotchi after midnight. The monster escapes and sinks the ship, but forget that. How's this guy gonna explain to Keisuke's brother what happened to him? Where's my brother? Where is he? There was an accident. He slipped and fell over a cliff. Uh, you could have just said the scorpion got him too. That'd probably be more believable than saying he randomly fell off a cliff. I think the only way you can make this sound more suspicious is if you said he slipped and fell on a bullet. Fortunately for him, he's interrupted by the now fully grown monster from the egg, Berugon. Now, Berugon shouldn't be confused with Bear Ugon, which is a completely different Japanese monster. Allow me to illustrate the difference. Bear Rugon is a brown, four-legged, lizardy thing with a horn on its head, while Bear Rugon is a brown, four-legged, lizardy thing with a horn on its head. Hopefully I cleared that up for you. Okay, to be fair, there are some differences. For example, Barugon's powers include punching things with his tongue, which also doubles as a freeze ray. I'm going to say that again. Barugon punches and freezes things using his tongue. You know what? I'm just gonna go play this clip again. You know, guys, hmm. it just dawned on me how, how weird this film is, you know? Yeah, It's, really? it's it kind of goofy. There may be a giant monster on the rampage, but these two have the right idea. Instead of evacuating, just sit around and drink. Looks like we can't dive for the opal right now. We're not joking around. I had to kill two men for that jewel. You murder you. Murdered my brother and called you too. Whoopsie doodle. Murdered my brother. Relax. Jeez, next you're gonna be mad at me for screwing your wife. You did what? Ah, crap. I shouldn't have said that. Oh well, at least this revelation leads to the first fight of the movie. You know, it just occurred to me, we're more than halfway through this movie, and so far there hasn't been a whole lot of Gamera. Good thing this isn't the 2014 Godzilla, or else the internet would complain so much about that! Do The army tries to stop Barugon's rampage, but they're no match for his freeze tongue. My god, Barugon's like a walking dentine ice commercial of the apocalypse spewing minty fresh clouds of pure terror! The army gets a break when Barugon... Falls asleep? You know, I think this is the first movie I've seen where the monster's rampage is ended by a nap. 
However, Baragon gets cranky when people try to interrupt his beauty sleep, so he unleashes his most terrifying weapon of all. I speak, of course, about Baragon's dreaded DEATH RAINBOW! Why do I get the feeling this is what Mike Huckabee thought would happen when gay marriage was legalized? Uh, hey, what do you know? Gamera's in this Gamera movie. Always in search of vaster sources of heat and light energy, Gamera was immediately aware of Baragon's rainbow. Are you sure Gamera's attracted to heat? Because it kind of seems like he's attracted to plot convenience. Alright, it's time for the giant flying turtle to face off against the rainbow death lizard to find out once and for all who's more ridiculous. Oh, here we go! FIGHT ALREADY! Hi, Kiva! Gamma is off to a pretty good start, but let's see how he stands up to Barugan's attacks. <laughs> Gotta keep that pimp tail strong. Gamera hits him with some flames, but apparently he forgot that Barugan's tongue is a fire extinguisher. Oh no, my turtle powers are failing me, and I had so many more innocents to slaughter and annoying children to save. But Gamera still has one more trick up his sleeve. That's right, the good old-fashioned sucker punch. Okay, so in addition to shooting rainbows, it appears Baragon's blood is made out of grape Kool-Aid. Does he fart Cabbage Patch Kids too? Well, that's enough Gamera for this Gamera movie, so let's move on. Gamera's only weakness is his sensitivity to cold. Okay, again, if you're able to be frozen solid and not die, that is not a weakness! That's like saying Wily e. Coyote has a weakness to getting blown the fuck up. So while Barugan continues his reign of terror, Keisuke remembers the guy who tried to kill him is still in this movie. You filthy... <laughs> Stop, Keisuke! Is this because I tried to kill you? I'm telling you, that thing was not a jewel. It was Barugan's egg. You'd better listen. <laughs> I won't swallow that. I mean, giant lizards that shoot killer rainbows is one thing, but saying it actually came from somewhere? Tch. Ridiculous. I went to see my brother. I couldn't find him or his wife. Then maybe you should call the cops. In fact, considering this guy tried to kill you, you should have done that as soon as you got back. So Keisuke manages to hogtie his attempted murderer and still doesn't contact the authorities. Oh, and I guess these two are in love now or something. Well, it's great that this guy's tied up, but how are you going to stop Barugan? According to the New Guinea tradition, the monster Barugan will follow a shimmering 6,000 carat diamond anywhere. Well, that's convenient! I love the fact that the diamond has to specifically be 6,000 carats. Also, where the hell did they get a 6,000 carat diamond from? It was brought back from New Guinea by a native girl. How many giant gemstones does New Guinea have? Since he cannot live in water, he is being lured to Lake Biwa. Wait, what? Barugan can't live in water? But he came out of the water when he first appeared. In fact, considering he was tiny when he went in there and turned into a giant just minutes later, I'd say he's like the kaiju equivalent to a grow monster. Unfortunately, things don't quite go according to plan. He's not following. What's going on down there? Damn, the diamond's actually 6,001 carats. It was discovered that the infrared rays Barragan had been exposed to while in his shell had so enlarged him that he could no longer be lured by the diamond. Uh-huh. And uh, how exactly did they discover that? Or did the narrator just tell them to? So after the diamond doesn't work, the army tries a different strategy. Helicopters dropped artificial rain on him for days. Why didn't you try shooting him? So it's seriously rain that takes him down? I can't believe I'm saying this, but that rainbow ice lizard has a dumb weakness. So anyway, after weakening him with rain, they try luring Barugan into a lake using a... 
concentrated diamond ray? Whatever, at this point I'll accept anything. Meanwhile, the bad guy has been freed by rescue geisha here, and once he learns they're using a giant diamond to attract Barugan, he decides, eh, what the hell, might as well try and steal that. I've got a right to this and I'm taking it! Okay, there's soldiers on this boat. Somebody arrest this asshole already. But he didn't count on Barugan trying to slip him some tongue. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that may be one of the best deaths in cinema history. Why do you want to see Baragon again? Maybe she wants him to make a double rainbow so she can have the video go viral. I know we'll never be able to destroy it. Well, not with that attitude you won't. Eventually though, Keisuke learns that the only way to defeat Baragon is to fight rainbow with rainbow. Am I saying more weird sentences this video than usual? Cause it kind of feels like I am. Use a huge mirror. It'll reflect Baragon's rainbow. And even if that doesn't work, the rainbow can still lead you to his delicious lucky charms. Alright boys, time to commence planned death selfie. Giant tanks are zeroed in on Baragon, hoping to provoke him into using his rainbow, which the mirror would reflect back to its source. I see nothing wrong with this plan. <laughs> I knew those tanks shouldn't have brought pictures of their families. The blast doesn't quite kill Barugan, but hey, just try it again, right? He's got to produce another rainbow. You might as well just forget it. He won't. I was raised with animals. If they get hurt by a mistake they make in the jungle, you'll have to believe me, they never do it again. Okay, I'm pretty sure animals screw up more than once all the time. And besides, you can at least try using the mirror again in case you're wrong. No? You're not gonna do that? Just gonna give up? Okay, let me know how that goes. Well, things look bleak, but I can't help thinking there was another monster in this movie. At last, the area that Baragon had frozen begins to thaw. Gamera is coming back to life. Oh yeah! Gamera's in this Gamera movie! Barely! And so with six minutes left in the movie, we get our final battle. So, would that count as a tongue lashing? <laughs> Alright, I deserve that one. Uh, hey look, they're reenacting the opening credits to this episode. I don't know why they're fighting, Barugan just wants somebody to rub his belly. Eventually though, Gamera decides to send Barugan back from where he came. Since, you know, he came out of the ocean when he first appeared and- Okay, seriously, how does he have a weakness to water? Oh no! Water! My one weakness! Rainbow powers fading! Butterfly in the sky! I can go twice as high! Take a look, it's in a book! Reading Rainbow! So Gamera saves the day, and I guess the army just chooses to forget the fact that he destroyed a dam at the beginning. I did a terrible thing when I went after that opal in the forest. No, I know it's all my fault. Actually, none of it's your fault, since you didn't bring the egg back or cause it to hatch, but hey, if it gets you a sympathy lay, go for it, dude. Okay, I know I spent the last several minutes making fun of this movie, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This is easily my favorite of the original Gamera films. Admittedly, a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is the only one that doesn't have a Kenny in it, but this is also the only entry in the original Gamera series that feels close to a mid-60s Godzilla movie. Sure, it's weird and campy and doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's also pretty entertaining and doesn't pander to little kids as hard as later entries. Gamera fans may be disappointed that he isn't in the movie more, but Barugan makes up for it by having some of the most batshit crazy powers in monster movie history. Of the original Gamera films, this is the only one that I actually don't mind watching from time to time. So if you're a fan of movies like Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, this one might be worth a look. So there's a good sign, the second movie's actually an improvement over the first one. Will this trend continue? <laughs> no.